Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV, and in this video I would like to show you how and where to adjust the temperature on an electric water heater. And I'll also be talking about what the temperature should be set to. This video is a follow-up video to my previous video where I talked about how an electric water heater works, and there I got some questions on how the thermostat works, and is it okay if the upper and lower thermostats are set to different temperatures? So I will try my best to answer all of those questions and at the end of the video I also bought an extra little thermostat, a water heater thermostat, that will be able to take apart and take a look how it looks like inside and how does it actually work. Okay, so let's start with the easy stuff first and that is where to adjust the temperature. And that is going to be behind these panels right over here. But before you do that, the first thing you want to do is turn off the power to the water heater. Most water heaters are not convenient to the point where you could just unplug them with a plug like this. So you have to go to the breaker panel and find the breaker from the water heater and turn that off. In my case, it's this one over here and it's actually labeled. If you're not lucky like me and none of your stuff is labeled, then you're going to have to just start turning the breakers off one at a time to try to find which one is the one from the water heater or just shut the whole house off. One tip I can give you though is that almost all water heater breakers are two pole breakers. So big ones like this, it's not going to be a small one. So that should narrow down your search. Now that I have the power off, we can start taking the panels off. And usually the screws on these little panels are going to be Phillips screws. Sometimes it'll be a flathead and once in a long time it'll be a nut driver. Either a quarter inch or a five sixteenths. Got this one off. And the first thing that will greet you is probably some insulation, and that is normal. This will either flap up, or you just take this whole piece out, like this. And there we see our thermostat. And from years of experience, I've gotten used to checking to make sure that the power is indeed off. I just use a voltage detector, or a voltage pen, or if you have a meter, you could use a meter, just to make sure that the power really is off. Because I've had times before where I turned the breaker off and everything was still on. So you got to be careful. So here we have the upper thermostat and the upper element behind this little plastic guard that looks like this. This is from the new thermostat that I have. And if you notice, sometimes you have to wiggle this a little bit. There's little clips that you have to disengage to take the cover off. But if you notice, my thermostat looks a little bit different than this one. And that is because the upper thermostat will oftentimes have a high limit switch, a resettable switch, which I talk about in a lot more detail in my previous video. And right over here is where you adjust the temperature. Usually it's adjusted with a flathead screwdriver. So you stick the screwdriver inside of the slot and you can adjust the temperatures. Every water heater will have slightly different thermostats, but they should all look pretty similar. They'll have the temperatures and a little knob that you can turn to adjust the temperatures. Let's also take a quick look at the bottom one and see what it looks like over there. And by the way, um, when you're putting these screws back in, make sure you don't over tighten them because if you strip out the metal right here, then those screws, you're not going to be able to snug them up anymore. It's going to be really loose. Once again, there's some insulation over here. We take that out. We have the plastic cover. Take that off, and right over here we have the lower thermostat, which looks a lot more like the one that I bought. And before I start taking this thermostat apart, let's just talk a little bit about how it actually works. So this thermostat, inside of it, it has a little micro switch, a tiny switch, that is up against a little metal disc. This metal disc inside of here, right behind this metal plate, is called the bimetal, and that bimetal is made out of two different metals fused together. And those different metals, they expand differently when they are heated. Metal expands when it's heated, and those two, they expand at different rates, which causes that little metal disc to start to bend or deform and pop like a snap disc. And that disengages the little switch and interrupts the power going through this thermostat, which turns off the element and stops heating the tank. And because it's measuring the temperature through this little hole right here, or basically this whole plate, this piece over here, it goes up against the actual wall of the tank. So there's no insulation in between it and the tank. It just goes straight up to the steel or the metal on the tank. And one thing that I want to point out before we continue is that if you're watching this video because your water heater all of a sudden started running out of hot water, most likely the temperature setting is not the problem. 
my guess would be that one of the heating elements burned out, either the upper element or the lower element. So I would begin with a video on that topic, how to check and replace a heating element. Now let's get to the interesting part. What should the temperature on your thermostats be set to? According to the US Department of Energy, the water heater temperature should be set to 120 degrees because that is the most optimal setting for energy savings and it greatly reduces the risk of somebody getting burned. But according to OSHA, the water heater should be set to 140 degrees to kill bacteria and sanitize the tank. So what should it be? My answer to this question is usually set it to whatever you want. It's adjustable for a reason. If you don't have enough hot water, if you feel like it's lukewarm, increase the temperature. But, but, keep one thing in mind. If you have little kids in the house, or if there's elderly, they might get burned if it's set too high. For example, if the water heater is set to 150 degrees, which some people do, it only takes two seconds with your hand under that hot water, it only takes two seconds to get third degree burns. So really quick. So babies, they don't sense the heat as fast and they might not yank their hand away in time or elderly that are slowly losing their sense of touch. They might not be able to realize that it's that hot really quickly, which will also give them some burns. Other than that though, if that is not something you're concerned about and you don't care about the slightly higher energy bill, really set it to whatever you want. If it's not hot enough, set it a little higher. And if you want to know what your water heater manufacturer recommends, there's usually a sticker right on the water heater that says something about that. So for example, on this one, it recommends not setting it over 125 degrees. And the next question I want to cover is, is it okay to set the temperature on the lower thermostat and the bottom thermostat to different settings? And the answer is yes, it's okay to do that. Most people will have the temperature, and that's the recommendation as well, set to the same temperatures on both of them, like 125, 125. But if you wanted to, you could set the top one a little bit higher, not the lower one. And here's why. The water heater, the cold supply line, it comes in through here and goes into the dip tube, which brings the cold water all the way down to the bottom of the tank. So that lower element will oftentimes come on first. And even though in my previous video, I mentioned that the top element has priority, it will always come on first. That's only if it's calling for heat, if the thermostat is calling for heat. But if the top portion of the water heater is still hot, this thermostat is off. So in most cases, the bottom element will come on first for a little bit before the top one comes on, which typically results in the bottom element having a lower lifespan than the upper element. In order to avoid that, what you could do is set the top thermostat 5 or 10 degrees higher, and that will even out the lifespan of the two elements by turning on the top element a little bit quicker. Okay, and last but not least, how the thermostat works and we'll take it apart. So usually there's two wires going to it, one in and one out. So power is going in, it gets interrupted by that switch, and then it comes out. So when the thermostat is closed, when that metal switch is closed, the power is going through. When it pops open, it interrupts the power and nothing is going through. So what I'm going to do right now is simulate the hot water getting hot. So usually it's next to the water here, right? When this gets hot, it pops open. So instead of the water heater, I'm just going to put a lighter under here and warm that up and see if it opens. Let's move that a little bit lower. There you go. And in order for us to watch that, I'm going to hook up my meter leads to these two terminals that and one on this side set the meter to continuity and we hear that beep that beep means that this line is connected it's not interrupted so now what I'm going to do is put the lighter under here and once that switch pops open this meter should stop beeping because there's no longer going to be continuity so let's let's give it a try there it goes. Stop beeping. So now what will happen is as this thermostat cools off or the water in the tank cools off, this little bimetal switch, the little metal disc in here, that will cool off and snap back and that will start to beep again. I don't know why I took my leads off. Let's put them back on. So once this cools off enough, the meter should start to beep again. Or what we could do is turn up the temperature on the thermostat and that should actually 
cause it to turn back on as well. See that? And if I turn it back down, it turns off. And that's because if we want it hotter, then it takes longer for that disc to pop. So that's kind of fun to try, but now let's go ahead and take this apart and see what we have inside of it. And this is what the inside looks like. So here's our snap disc. It's behind this plate. Once that pops, it engages or disengages this little micro switch. I can hear it click, but I don't know if you can hear that clicking on the camera. So let's try to hook my meter leads back up and then press this button and see if we could simulate that disc snapping. So I'll put one lead on here again, another lead on here, set it to continuity. And there it is. Yeah, so basically that disc, when it's cold, it's pressing in, and when it gets warmed up, it warps and it bends the other way and it pops. And that turns the element off. I'm gonna try to take this metal disc out and see what that looks like too. Okay, so I finally managed to get the welds out. Oh, there it goes. And here is our snap disc. Look at this guy. That is so cool. Let's try to snap it once. There it goes. And if we take this little metal part off, here's the little adjustment screw where we do the temperature. And that basically applies or takes away the pressure from that snap disc, which determines how fast it pops. So that's kind of cool. And if we take this apart, we should be able to see the contacts. Oh, there it goes. Nothing too exciting here, but here's the contacts. So basically one wire is going here, other one is coming out of here, and as you can see, the power just travels through here and goes over here. And when it's interrupted, this little piece just barely goes away. These contacts, it just barely separates to interrupt the power. And that's what this little plunger does. So let's put that back in and just take a look. See, as I'm pressing the button, you can see the contacts separating. So that's pretty neat. So there you have it. This is the insides of the thermostat. And that is all I had. I think I covered everything that I wanted to talk about. If you have any more questions or comments, please let me know in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I would appreciate it if you mashed that like button on the way out, and I'll see you next time. And if you're still here and not in the comment section below, recently I lost a ton of money on cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, and it wasn't just me, a lot of people, because there was a big crash. So some people now ask me, hey Jay, what is it like to invest into Bitcoin? And I tell them, hey, if you know nothing about it, here's what it's like. Imagine that there's a guy standing next to a garage, and that garage door is just slightly cracked open. And he's just standing there, he's chilling. And as he's standing there, he notices that a dollar bill just slides out from underneath the garage. That kind of piques his curiosity. So he takes his wallet, he takes the dollar bill out, and, you know, just out of interest, he puts it on top of that one and slides it back in. A few seconds later, a $10 bill slides out. That really gets his interest. So he takes out a $10 bill from his wallet, puts it on top, slides it back in. A few seconds later, a $100 bill slides out. Now he's, now he's getting really excited. He takes all the cash out of his wallet, puts it on top of there, slides it back in. A few seconds later, a whole stack of hundreds just comes out of there. Now he's really psyched. He's like so excited. He's like, wow, I hit the lottery. So he takes his whole wallet, all his credit cards. He even stops taking things out. He just throws the whole wallet on there, takes off his watch, his bracelet, everything valuable that he has on him, throws it into that pile and slides it in. And as he's standing there in excitement, to his horror, he sees that the garage door just closes back down and never opens again. And unfortunately for most people, that is their Bitcoin experience.